We're going to turn now to a morning exclusive. In a moment, we'll speak live with Travis Scott's attorney as the death toll in that Houston concert tragedy rises to nine. But first, let's go back to Marcus Moore there in Dallas with the latest on this. Good morning again, Marcus. Well, uh, Cecilia, good morning. As this investigation stretches into another day, the, the death toll, as you mentioned, sadly is rising. 22-year-old Barty Shahani died from her injury. She was a senior at Texas A&M University and was at the concert with, with family. She suffered multiple heart attacks, authorities say, as she was crushed by the crowd. And this was her first time attending this music festival. Uh, it's been nearly a full week since the incident left eight other young people dead and hundreds hurt. And there was chaos long before the gates even opened. Um, and in the days since, there's been finger pointing about who could have or who should have stopped the show and whether or not it could have been stopped sooner by Travis Scott, the, the organizers, or even Houston police. But this morning, no one has been held accountable and there's no clear answers on what exactly went wrong. Uh, Cecilia, the police chief said that this is a criminal investigation and that it could take months for them to find answers as to what went wrong at this concert. Cecilia. Okay, Marcus, thank you so much. And as you just said, there are so many questions. And right now we are joined live by Travis Scott's attorney, Ed McPherson. Ed, Mr. McPherson, thank you so much uh, for being here with us this morning. I want to start right there with Barty Shahani, the ninth young person uh, who passed away from the injuries that she sustained there. At your client's show, we also have a nine-year-old boy who is in this medically induced coma. So I'll ask you, how much responsibility does your client bear for what happened that night? You know what, that's what the investigations are about. That's what we're trying to get to the bottom of is, is who was responsible. This obviously was a systemic breakdown that we really need to get to the bottom of before we start pointing fingers at anyone. There are so many questions indeed about what happened there. Uh, we know that police declared this mass casualty event just before 9.40 p.m. The show, though, continued to go on for another 40 minutes. That mass casualty declaration, did it not get to your, your clients at all or his, anyone on his team for that matter? It absolutely did not. In fact, I think we've seen footage of police um, half an hour later, just walking about and, and not looking like it was a mass, ca mass casualty event. But clearly, the important thing is that never got to Travis. That never got to Travis's crew. He's up there trying to perform. He does not have any ability to know it, what's going on down below, uh, certainly on a mass level. So we've seen, you're looking at one right now, so many videos from that show. We know that Travis stopped the show several times. At one point, he acknowledges that someone had passed out and called for help. Uh, we've seen other footage where you could see ambulance lights, uh, f concert goers going out in stretchers. At what point did Travis find out what happened? And while all this was going on, what did he think was happening down below? You know what, Travis didn't really understand the full effect of everything until the next morning, uh, truly. He did not know what was going on. As you could see from, from the, clip, the clip right there, he's on a riser at one point and he sees one boy down and he actually asks security, he stops the show, he asks security get, to get to that person. There were a couple other times, one with, you say an ambulance, but it looked more like a golf cart with some lights. He wasn't sure what that was, but he stopped the show for that told people to, to get aside if they're okay, put their hands up. Um, there was one other instance right in front of him where he saw something specific. But understand that when he's up on the stage and he has flash pots going off around him and he has an ear monitor that, that has music blasting through it and his own voice, he can't hear anything, he can't see anything. We also just saw th this new report that Marcus was just talking about right before you uh, about how out of hand this was even before the concert started. Folks storming security gates, one point person sent to the hospital before these gates even open. Was Travis Scott aware of any of that? He certainly was not. Um, he, he's not part of that. He, he doesn't run security. Um, he was preparing for the concert and that's it. So this is the first time I've seen footage of that and, and I'm pretty sure that, that Travis wasn't aware of that until much after the concert. But, but this isn't the first time, sir, that fans have been injured at one of Travis Scott's shows. He was arrested, in fact, twice for incidents that took place at his concert. Does he not have a history of inciting, uh, inciting crowds that come to his shows? You know what, Travis, as an artist, has really grown up a lot. I've spoken personally to him about this, and 
he really didn't understand the magnitude of his power up on the stage, I think, as a young performer. And he's he's really matured over the years. He does understand that. That's why when he saw something specific, he 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 told security to get over there. And when he saw other things that were specific, he made sure that somebody went to help. So when he was telling the crowd that night to rage, that was not inciting them? I don't think so. I think it's it's nothing more than any other performer wants. You want your 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 audience to be engaged. You want them to be standing up. You don't want them to be sitting down. Um, I certainly don't think he. I, I know he didn't have anything like this in mind. Certainly, he wanted them to be engaged. He wanted them to have a good time. We're coming out of COVID. This is what this festival was about. Ed McPherson, we thank you so much for your time this morning. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.